I don't think Rudy knows I'm just like rinsing all of this stuff. <laughs> monster <laughs> after monster. Um, yeah, so obviously you know Rudy, right? Yeah, I've known Rudy for a couple years now. A new role within the business? Are you allowed to speak about it? Uh, yeah, I think he would probably be um, excited for me to, to speak about it. So, um, so my listeners will know of Rudy from either my story. He's also been on, did I tell you he had an episode as well? I, I listened to yeah. it. I oh, listened did to, you? I listened oh, to it. Yeah. So that's where I originally... Um, was that the first? That's the first time okay. I was introduced to to you. Cool. Yeah. And um, Vince had an episode as well. You see that? I didn't listen to Vince. So, no. So, okay. So when I was here and me and Rudy uh, recorded that episode, um, what I did was I was put in touch with Vince. I obviously knew who Vince was already. Mm-hmm. Um, and he said, oh, let me connect you. Let me connect you. Um, and I was like, okay, cool. Awesome. So he put us in contact. We spoke. Well, we, we arranged a call that was meant to be like, the way Vince said it was like, oh, let's arrange a call. And basically, if you're a good, cool, if, if you're, you're a cool, good fit, if yeah. you're a good, cool dude. Yeah. And you know, you're not a dick, then let's do a podcast. Okay. And literally after like 30 seconds, he was like, do you want to just record now? <laughs> and I was like, okay. So uh, he actually used that audio for his podcast. Okay. I don't think I even, I, um, way back when. I've listened to quite a few of his episodes. I'm kind of off, you know, um, with all the great shows that are out there, it's hard to catch every single episode. Right. Um, so I don't know if I caught yours, but I'll have to go so, back and. And listen to so it. So that was back then. And then obviously, dude, from there, it's so funny how things happen because like from there, obviously got in touch with Vince, went to yeah. Vince's mastermind or it's a sit-in at his mastermind. And then, and oddly enough, if you go back even further, I was put in touch with Rudy from another seminar I was at in the UK this time last year. Okay. And who was that with? Mark Coles. Mark Coles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mark Coles has also been on my podcast. Okay. Um, and obviously then... Obviously, I got put in touch with Ben, et cetera, et cetera. So, dude, everyone's interconnected. It's yeah. funny. Now, it's Ben. Uh, have you had Ben on yet? Or We were meant to record today, okay. but he didn't have time. So, yeah. I'm going to catch him another time and same with Jordan. Okay. Um, but, yeah. Yeah. Obviously, every time I'm... Dude, I feel like I've been here. I've been here three times in the last few months. Yeah. It's it's, it's, it's just incredible with, I mean, the, the, the size and scope of the world and where you live and then me, how closely we've been interconnected. And then here we met two nights ago at a dinner right. and now we're sitting down in Rudy's apartment overlooking the Bay in Tampa Dude. Bay while he's in California and <laughs> we're Tony recording Robbins. a podcast. <laughs> exactly. It's just like, like what? Uh, like, yeah. like, how did this happen? You know what the funniest thing is? Like, um, I put up my story, but last night, but I didn't want to put too much on my story because Ben's a private guy. Yeah. Um, like to be invited to Ben's for food, like his actual house with his family mm-hmm. was the most crazy moment because to me like like everyone ben was like this the, the cool science guy in generation yeah. one and from that moment you i know, was like this guy is like the boss yeah did i did i share with you um you had never been to downtown uh powerhouse in tampa no had you? okay so no you 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 said it's yeah. closed now yeah it is complete it's closed what? but in Generation, you mentioned Generation Iron, right. so a, a large amount of that movie was filmed there, was filmed there um, and it led up. So um, ben, Ben's workout stuff or someone else's? Ben's, uh, a lot of Ben's were filmed in there, and then Ben's, um, all the studies and the research that they did for that movie. Is that there? That was at the University of Tampa. Yeah, which is just yeah. down here. So under Dr. Jacob Wilson, who Rudy studied under yeah, yeah, his yeah. research on. Yeah. So I reached out to him before I reached out to Ben. Yeah. Well, um, Dr. Wilson. Yeah, okay. yeah, and he was like, uh, "Oh, come see the facility." At this moment, he had moved, so yeah. he's moved to his new facility. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, dude, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. So let's go all the way back then. Just you know, if if anyone's interested. Yeah. This time last year, obviously, you know, we both saw Generation Iron when it came out. Whenever, go back to this time last year. Literally, probably this weekend last year, I went to. Um, uh, to okay, let's go back even further. February last year. I was in Hawaii for a month okay. with, a, with a client, coaching the client. Obviously, he wasn't going to turn that down. Yeah. <laughs> um, flew back, and I decided I want to kick off my podcast. And I asked, um, sent an email to an old friend of mine in Ireland called Larry Doyle. So Larry Doyle was actually a client of Mark Coles's. Okay. Right? So I dropped him a, an email. He gets back to me. Like, we were good friends back in the day, uh, me and Larry, both Irish. And he's a PT, successful PT in Ireland, who has just, at that point, moved online Mm -hmm. completely. No more PT. So I reached out to Larry, and I was like, dude, I would love to get you on my podcast. I was trying to think of people in Ireland. 
um, strategically actually I tried to like okay let's get a few Irish people because obviously I'm Irish yeah. and um, I get Larry on and the episode was do you need a PT or do you need an online coach because I wanted people to know that there's a, diff- a massive yeah, difference huge. and some people need one and some people need the mm-hmm. other um, so the whole episode was around that and he is 10 years in the industry as a PT and he's just gone online so there was no bias on his part yeah. I've only ever done online and actually now I will do the odd session with a client like mm-hmm. I have actually tomorrow morning Yeah. so it was good and to be honest with you like we both give our honest opinions and who we feel gets value from one and who gets value from the other so if you're listening to this and you're curious uh, episode two is where you want to go. Yeah. Um, so that was my my first one was like my journey. My second one was this. So anyway, Larry said, listen, dude, I'm going to be over in the UK. I'm going to the seminar. Why don't I come to you? I'll fly into London. We'll record. And then I'll go up and go to the seminar. Mm. Sweet. Awesome. So the night before, he's like, dude, you don't fancy coming to the seminar, do you? I was like, mm, not really. Like, I never invested any money into anyone mm-hmm. at this point. Like, yeah. how bad is that? I said it to you the other night. Never invested any money, never cared. Like, to me, in my head, like, ignorantly. Now, now I don't want to, I'm not going to cut you. I just want to pop in real quick and then let you get back. You said that, but at the same time, you were pursuing your doctorate. This is it. This is it. So, for me, I was like, right, I'm focusing on this sort of my, this aspect of my education. Yeah. When I'm finished, I will then delve into investing my research in different aspects of more health and fitness. Did you know that back then? then that that was the route that you were going to go or did you think i'm going to do my doctorate and then i'm going to um per, go into a career in i never in a million years thought i'd be sitting here speaking to you in tampa yeah <laughs> putting out an episode of my podcast yeah, yeah with a, where with the way the business a... has gone this year not in a million years so for me like i, I, I spoke about this a, a bit in 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 i suppose while i was doing my phd and like i said to you that i'm not about building up my business but so I never really invested a huge amount of money into that area. It was like, oh, you know, this is a bit of pocket money, helping some people on the way. Until this moment, I was like, will I go? Like, it's 250 pounds. Like, that's expensive, Mm -hmm. right? I thought it was. I was like, absolute steal for what what happened. Um, I was like, "Mm, let me think about it, dude. So anyway, in a moment of madness, I booked this seminar. And it was uh, training your average Joe client. Okay. Which truthfully is is my demographic of clients. Mm-hmm. Like they're just normal people who want to get in shape. Yeah. So we myself and Larry recorded the podcast. I went up to mm-hmm. Nottingham, went to the seminar, met Mark on the lunch break, and he kind of knew who I was through through social circles. We got chatting and he goes, Are you talking about his Facebook ads? And I was like, Oh, it's not Phil Graham's guy? Mm-hmm. Rudy and he's like yeah how do you know Rudy I was like I don't but I've seen him Mm -hmm. and oddly it was I saw Rudy on Phil Graham's story when he was at Vince's mastermind in Tampa last year yeah just previous and I was like he was like why don't I put you in touch with Rudy and I was like oh dude that would be awesome that would be so sweet so he put me in touch with Rudy we hopped on a call um me and Rudy kicked off the idea of the 30 day cover model shred, which okay. you and I are, 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 are doing going forward. Yep. And then Rudy had loads going on. I loads going on. So that kind of delayed until it got to around August sometime. And I contacted Ben. I was like, at this point I'd start investing in people to mm-hmm. grow my education, learn more, serve people better. And I got to that point. I reached out to Ben. We'd spoken a little bit before and I was like, dude, I've never had a coach in my life. If I want to have a coach, I want it to be you. He obviously knew that I had my my scientific research. Was he familiar he, with, yeah. with who you were? A little. Well, well I told him. Okay. He we we'd had some conversations before then, so that really resonated with him. Yeah. And um, so then me and Rudy kind of were like, yeah, we'll do it at some point. And I was like, dude, I'm coming over. I'm starting training with Ben. I'm in Tampa. Mm-hmm. Let's get this thing off the ground. Yeah. And we did. And then I came over, recorded with him. He put me in touch with Vince. Recorded with Vince. Went to Vince's mastermind, um, got in touch with Craig Ballantyne, mm-hmm. um, all these guys, and then and then you, yeah, and now you're here, yeah. So good. So, but your side of the story is cool because so, you know all these people too. Yeah. Right? So going back, so if we, you know, just to we can piece this with Rudy, we'll keep him as kind of like the centerpiece right now. Rudy, Mauer. we are in his apartment. Really. Yeah, we are sitting in Rudy Mauer's apartment. <laughs> He's in LA right now at a Tony Robbins event. Um, we're we're looking. We're the, honestly not trying to name drop, but. We just have some pretty cool mates. Yeah, and it's just, it's just a crazy, crazy, crazy story. So while Rudy was 
at the University of Tampa. So this is pre RudyMauerFitness.com. Right. This is pre Facebook ads. This is pre anything going on. So this is probably dating so back. Just I just want to hop over for years. two seconds. So for those of you guys who don't know, listen to the episode with Rudy. Really, really quick. Rudy was a PT in Nottingham, England, a few years ago making 30 bucks an hour. Mm-hmm. He is now making multi seven figures on his online fitness business and is now consulting for dozens of entrepreneurs, fitness entrepreneurs all over the world, mm-hmm. making multiple seven figures. Yep. yep. So yeah, back so, then. Yeah. So he came to America to study at the University of Tampa. I was doing some work with a few of the researchers oh, were you? doing cool. wind gate testing. Oh, awesome. Um, so we put my, I went through a six week protocol three times a week of minimum 10 or maximum 10 minutes of work and nothing changed with my diet. Nothing changed with my nutrition at the time. All we did was implement this three times a week wind gate protocol. Um, and we had studied and we had measured it. And I don't have the numbers. I wish we were going to know about Just for people who, who aren't aware, can you explain what that is? Yeah, Wingate, in my opinion, is if you want to get shredded, this is going to be the single greatest tool to drop fat. Um, as long as you're still eating within some type of caloric. If you're, if you're in a massive caloric deficit, right. you can't do this. So what a Wingate is, um, is we're all familiar with a spin bike. So this is going to be kind of like your next level or advanced tier spin bike. So what you're going to do is as you start going, you get cranking, you're literally trying to get that bike going as fast as possible. The bike has been preset at once you hit a particular uh, RPMs that a weight drops. So the minute you hit that RPM, there's going to be resistance that's pushing against you. And your goal, once that weight drops, is to maintain a certain level of RPM. And the weight, depending upon the level of bike that you're using, this is what's amazing at doing at a university, Mm -hmm. like the University of Tampa, is they have the most advanced like a twenty thousand dollar bike hooked up to a computer so literally the weight is changing to make sure that i'm maintaining right the same rpms throughout the course of the so so for those of you who did watch generation iron that's the bike that ben was yes right yes and if you guys are aware the two people that were beside him were dr lane norton Mm -hmm. who was also based in tampa and dr jacob wilson who was rudy's um was Rudy's boss essentially when he was doing his masters. Yeah. I mean, his, right. his educator. And, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, so yeah, were, so you were doing that at that time? Yeah. So I was, cool. I was, uh, they, so the University of Tampa had a performance lab at downtown Tampa, which was the gym that I was training at here, which I trained with Ben. He was prepping, cool. uh, just piecing it all together. So I was, I was doing that program outside of the Humans Performance Lab, working with a few of Rudy's yep. classmates and associates. Right. Rudy was back at the university. So we didn't really, um, know each other, right. but we were connected on Facebook. So once he graduates, I start seeing this kid out and around Tampa posting these pictures with his laptop and his feet up by the pool, hmm. talking about all this money that he's making online. And I'm like, wait, I know who this kid is. He's right. that little researcher over there at the University of Tampa. Um, so I started kind of digging, digging a little bit into it, um, you know, and then I'm seeing all this stuff that he's working with these pro athletes and these celebrities. Um, so I get in touch with Vince and then I start working under him. I hire him as my business coach. This is, um, January of 2017. So just to introduce Vince, if you haven't listened, listen to the episode with him. Vince Del Monte is one of the, the real OGs on YouTube, believe it or not. Um, he was really big in the fitness space, obviously still is now he's a business coach. Mm -hmm. So for those of you guys who would have seen my last trip to Tampa, um, I was at his mastermind um where he was helping his six his seven figure mastermind so for those of us who are trying over the next year or two to aspire to turn over seven figures not because we love money but because we want to serve more people and add more value um yeah so yeah so you were in touch with him he was your business coach yeah so i heard vince um basically this was this was my introduction at that point in january 2017 to really the online fitness space um i have a i have a background in training um you know multiple certifications since the age i was 18. Uh, i've been lifting weights since i was 15 worked in gyms um but really my my careers have always or my, my career in my living has always been made either in a sales position or in a in corporate america um i wasn't an online entrepreneur until i started a business five years ago outside of the fitness space but um yeah, just a lot going on, you know, towards the end of 2016 and 17 in my life, I was ready to make a make a transition. And I knew at that point that the quickest way to get where I wanted to go was to hire somebody that had already been there. 
Um, so just like you, that was a moment in my life when I really started to invest in others, invest in coaching, invest in um, leadership, mentorship, and just really, I mean, I just tried to accelerate my growth as fast as possible. And I know the only way to do that was to hire somebody. Absolutely. Um, and I think that, and I think that's kind of in everything we do. I mean, that's essentially... Um, well, the thing is this, you know, like I was telling all these people getting, you know, everyone in cover model shape for, for the last few years, being like, invest in me, like I've done it. I'll show you how to get there, you know, twice, three times, four times as fast. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't investing in myself. Like I was investing into other people. Yep. And now that's all I'm doing. Like literally the only thing I've spent money on in God knows how long is like flights here. Mm -hmm. Like Vince's mastermind. Yeah. Um, you know, reinvesting into my business, everything that I know is going to turn the needle to get me to where I want to go. So when I'm having a conversation with a potential client now or someone who's like sliding in my DMs and they're asking about programs, I'm like, they're like, whoa, bro, that's expensive. And I'm like, well, you don't want to know what I pay my coach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I tell them, and I'm like, this is what I pay. And yeah. I know that, you know, if I continue to invest in myself, um, I'm going to get there quicker. You know, I think you need to resonate with someone on a different level, obviously to hand over money to someone to, to get you to where you want to be. But personally, like looking back now, if I could go back to 20 and invest sooner, mm -hmm. dude, like, ugh, honestly, I wish I could. Like, yeah. I wish well, I this could, is right? where I was very, uh, very fortunate, I guess, in, in kind of my life, uh, the route that I took. So, um, I got into kind of like some aggressive sales training in my early twenties. Um, so we went through neuro on the phone, uh, no in classroom. So, oh, cool. um, in America, I don't know if you guys had this. So dating myself a little bit, I'm a little bit older than you. So I'm 35. So are you? Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> so, um, around the time of the mid 2000, so 2004, 2005, like cell phones weren't what they were. Right. today um you know this was really dating like the flip phone the razors and the blackberries um so i worked for the largest wireless distributor in the country we had over 450 retail locations um and we were just aggressive aggressive sales guys um they would fly us out quarterly to big corporate level trainings um they put our leadership and our managers through nlp neurolinguistic programming yeah. training um, and it was just real kind of deep, deep dive into psychology and training. And I got that very early in my 20s. Um, and now as I'm back in the world of development and attending seminars and reading and working with coaches, a lot of what was given to me early in my life is resurfacing. 100%. And what's interesting is I wasn't ready for it then. When I was 23, 24, I was a kid. I was, you know, I was driven by trying to make as much money as possible. I was hungry and aggressive, shiny things, flashy suits, you know, just all the, all the stuff that you want when you're early in your life and you make money for the first time. Um, but now where I'm at, it's like rereading some of the books and relearning this thing. It's such a different level of um, integration into my life. I can actually take them and apply them Absolutely. every single day. So, so I think with the coaching aspect, you know, depending upon where you're at in your journey, whatever it is, that you're trying to go down, whether that's a business coaching or a fitness coaching or nutrition coaching, the level of coach that you seek and the level of price that you're probably going to have to pay is going to be dependent upon where you're currently. For sure. At. For somebody like you that's at a top producing business and trying to get to that next level, top tier, yeah, your coaching is going to cost more than somebody just starting out. For sure. And I think I mean, the same applies for physique. So I, if you're looking to do just your first weight loss, you're not going to get the same coach that somebody's going to be if they're trying to walk onto an Olympia stage. There's going to be tiers and progressions. And you know what? I've been having this conversation over the last few months. I've taken on some full-time coaches. I've taken on a full-time personal assistant, although I hate that word. It makes me sound, you know, egotistical. But uh, I've taken on a best friend who basically does all of the tasks that I'm unable to or don't need to do. Um, and so he's doing a lot of this stuff and we're going through a lot of aspects of the business. It's taken a bit of a change, a bit of a turn for the better. Mm -hmm. We're adding more value. Um, on, you know, self-reflecting on some of the relationships that I have with some clients, um, in terms of, you know, be a payment contact, whatever it is, and to move forward and add more value to more people, um, and to really grow as a business. Um, not just for myself, but for the clients involved and for the coaches involved, I need to make some harsh decisions. And some of those are to do with maybe some relationships or 
or payments that I have that have been around for like three years, mm -hmm. whereby in the meantime, I have finished my doctorate. I've spent you know, tens of thousands of pounds going to seminars, uh, traveling, um, investing in Ben, investing in my knowledge. Um, and obviously, you know, every now and then I need to recheck those. Yeah. And having conversations with a lot of entrepreneurs like yourself or in similar situations, it's refreshing to see like, I'm undercharging for my service, dude. Yeah. Like, and, and this isn't me being egotistical, but I don't know anyone else in the industry who has a PhD and has been on the cover of multiple magazines. Mm -hmm. Like, there just isn't. Um, so, you know, not that that's the be-all and end-all, but I feel like my what I can add value to and my relationship and the attention that I give my clients is really good. Mm -hmm. um, but the price needs to reflect that. The mm -hmm. investment needs to reflect yes. that. And what I've seen is... The clients that are paying higher ticket or are investing more financially stick to it more, dude, because they've more invested like for And it's not about how much money they have. Like I have some clients that don't have a lot of money, but this program is worth everything to them. Mm -hmm. They've got skin in the game. And then I've got some clients that are paying like, you know, probably below par of what they should. Yeah. And they're not getting the best out of the program. They're not really that fussed. And that's to their detriment. Yeah. Well, what anybody that's ever worked in anything that has to do with fitness can relate to this. Because even if you're the front desk or you're the cashier at a GNC, you know more than the rest of your family. GNC is a nutritional mm -hmm. store here in the States. So if you're that person, that means that everybody in your family is coming to you for free advice. Right. We're, we're air quoting it here. And how many times have you given free advice to your family or to your friends or to anybody that you know? For sure. And then instantly, the minute you walk away, you say to yourself in your head, they're not, they're not gonna do anything that. with what I gave them. No. The next time you see them, they ask you the exact same question. And it's because they've got no skin. They've got no nothing skin again, dude. in it. They've got yeah. nothing that they're losing. Um, it's funny. Have you read um, Influence by Robert Cialdini? No, but I was like, no. write that down, bro. Yeah. So there's a. If you're listening to this and this this resonates with you, write it down. Also. Yeah. This this is a book that I put on my must read list for Influence. anybody's influence. So in the book, Why? he um, uh, Robert Cialdini, I believe, is is the cool. author. Um, but in it, he he talks about actual research that um, you guys are familiar with horse racing. So they've done true testing on people that the minute you place a bet on a horse, your confidence in that horse has now gone up. You instantly think that that horse has a better chance to win. The horse doesn't know anything is going on. It has it like to that horse, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed in certain other than now you are financially invested and committed and you have skin in that game. So your commitment and your, your, like your attachment to that horse and to that race is now elevated. It's the same thing with any type of personal investment, coaching and um, personal development. Anything that you invest in and you give your money, you are now stronger attached to it. Than you know what? I like, I was speaking to you about it the other, the other night at, at, at dinner, but like, I don't know about you. And I don't know about you know any of you listening, whether you're coaches, aspiring online coaches, your clients of mine, your clients of someone else. You're thinking about getting a coach like for what I want to be and what the value of service that I want to provide. Like I would prefer have a smaller number of clients and give them everything that they can literally message. I will do whatever needs to be done. Change this, change that, etc. Yeah. Rather than have like, like a lot of people we know mm -hmm. thousands of yep. in inverted commas clients. Yep that aren't being emailed by that person. Mm -hmm. And it's like $60 for 12 weeks. Yeah. Well, well you, had, you brought, I had the aha moment because of you and it's going along exactly what you're saying right now. What, what I was doing with my own personal coaching program is I was trying to systemize and streamline the process so that I could get as many people into this funnel as possible, do the minimal amount of true work one-on-one -on -one with the person and just put them through a system. And what I realized is that's not what a coach does. If you want to create a training system and a training program, that's one business model. That's one way to go about getting people results. If you are a coach, that person is, is paying you 
for you. But you know why I said that to you? It's not because it works for me. It's because I could tell by speaking to you after five minutes that you give a shit about your clients. Yeah. So I guarantee you, because I know people who do this, and it's a good business model, but if you throw people down this rabbit hole for 60 bucks and you get loads of volume of clients, mm -hmm. and you're going to, you're literally going to be sitting down and you're like say, paying someone else to do yeah. it. You're going to be so demotivated, yeah. dude, because you're not adding value to yeah. people. You're, you've got no reason to wake up in the morning because the money's coming in. Cool, but money means fucking nothing, mm -hmm. dude. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, I have low dollar stuff. I have, I have free information that people can go out there and get because we all I want to do is, is, is help. I just right. want to put as much out there. I've been truly blessed in my life to. We've shared with you. We dropped ton, we dropped quite a bit of names early in this podcast. Right. <laughs> That's a very small fraction of, course. of who I've worked with and who I've been able to spend some time with learning in my lifetime. Once again, I told you I'm 35 years old. I've been at this for quite a bit of time. Um, so I feel blessed that I've been given um, an incredible opportunity to learn from some of the most brilliant people in this industry. Um, it's my obligation and duty now to pass that information along. Sure. And um, what I do is I know that the people that I'm learning from speak to a certain level. My goal is to take that information, repackage it, redeliver it, and deliver it to the audience that doesn't connect or resonate with the people that I'm learning from. They want to hear it from from me. For sure. Um, and that's and that's really how this kind of this pyramid works. I think you know in in in, in our world at least we have the top level educators, we have the people that are providing the research and providing the knowledge and then giving that to the coaches and the industry leaders and, 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 and then they're passing it down to the next segment. And eventually, as long as we keep the information moving in the right direction and we keep passing along the right information, we'll get it to everybody that is, is for looking sure. for it. What I really want to talk about is your, your, your personal shift in terms yeah. of what you're doing with yourself, dude. So, I mean, we're going back what a few months? Yeah, I mean this this most recent. Um, so Frankie kind of injured himself, right? And he's in a cast currently. Um, and yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, this 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 transformation of mine started uh, started prior to this um, to this injury on my hand. Um, you know, we talked about our business and we talked about some things that I had had going on, and I'm not going to go down a deep deep hole with um, some personal issues that I had going on, but. Dude, with We've all been there, mate. <laughs> yeah. Trust me. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to throw it out here now, but yeah. I think I can pull the trump card on this one. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> like, I, I don't this know, is, man. This <laughs> is for, my listeners will know my background story, but yeah. this is something we can talk about another time. It's actually a conversation that I was telling you I was having with Dr. Jordan Shaw. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes going through that shit is so valuable. You need it. So valuable, Wonder. dude. And I know there'll be every, like anyone listening to this will resonate on some level if you can't, oh my God, I'm so envious. But it'll come. Like we'll go through stages. Are you so familiar with Elliot Hulse? Yeah. Yeah. So I had lunch with Elliot uh, a while back. About he a year. He just dropped a big name in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not intentionally doing this. Jesus. <laughs> no, we were um, surrounded by some pretty cool people. And 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 he, the way that he, he was, he was not Vince's. Uh, yeah. The way that right? the way that he referenced this, it it made such incredible. It connected. It, it resonated so deeply with me. Um, because if you, if you go back and you follow Elliot, you can see that he's had his peaks, ups and valleys and downs. And I think we all ultimately do. And as long as you keep the right mental focus and drive during those down peaks and those, those deep, deep holes that you dig in, what comes out on the other side is always greater than where you, than where you were before. Always. And, 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 and Elliot's point was that in order to get to your next tier, you almost have to be broken down. Um, and, and torn apart and and depending upon who you are and where you're at and where you're going that breaking down and tearing apart is going to be different there's going to be different levels of it of for me because what I feel I'm breaking into right now with where these opportunities are coming into my life I felt I needed to go through a massive massive down be broken torn apart and then rebuilt back up. I know what, like, so, so what I really want to talk about is, is your carnivore diet, yeah. but, I, but I don't want to get off track because this is such a, a valuable lesson. And mm -hmm. on the point of being at your lowest low, like the conversation that I was having earlier with, with, with Jordan was, it's so valuable to be in such a vulnerable place and see who's around you and mm -hmm. stays with you yeah. when you have nothing to give but who you really are. 
in this day and age, that is so valuable mm-hmm. because it's so frequent that people are like, oh, hey, bro, let's go on your podcast so I can get some followers. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let's, let's whatever. And it's like people are just not authentic anymore. And when you find people that are, it's so valuable. And like when you can go through that shit, see who stays with you and, you know, supports you or invests time in you, it makes you really appreciate the people. Like even now in the future, going forward, if someone comes into my life, I can identify straight away if they're genuine or not. Mm-hmm. And you know, without that dip, without those shitty times, sometimes it's really difficult to grow. It's really difficult. I wouldn't be where I am right now if I hadn't gone through my shit. Yeah. Oh, my dude. I would be working, no offense to, to people working in research. I love research, but it's just not for me. I loved working with patients more than anything. That was the most fulfilling thing ever. But sitting at a desk, looking down a microscope for hours every day, feeling so disconnected from reality. And, you know, even though I was studying, obviously, cancer research, it wasn't until I actually stepped into the hospital and interacted with patients who had weeks left to live that I really feel like I was fucking making a difference. Yeah. But when you're sitting down, you know, sitting down on the bench and you're doing all these tests and it's like, yeah, it's valuable, but you don't see the humanity side of it. And it wasn't until I was there that I really realized like, this isn't for me. I would still be doing that. I would have no communication or no self-worth in terms of the value I can add to other people like I do now with my clients. I would be... I wouldn't have this business. I wouldn't have this podcast. I wouldn't have all of this shit if I hadn't been mm-hmm. at my lowest point and said, okay, well, I can't get knocked down any further than here. Yeah. What do I want to do? What do I yeah. want to achieve? And what do I need to do to get yeah. there yeah. without the help of anyone else? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah, you were going through this time, right? And then- <clears throat> yeah. I mean, um, I, I, I'll, I'll be completely honest. So, yeah, I mean, around the end, uh, around November of 2018, so this is dating a few months back, um, I had one business that was closing last year. November 29th was the day I shut down right. the business I was telling you about oh, yeah. earlier, which right. was a, uh, it was a, an online ticket brokerage. I was a, a secondary reseller of concerts, sporting events, and theater shows. Anyways, I had that business profitable for five years. The turn of 2018 though, it started to burn money. Um, I lost about $45,000 in that business last year. At the same time, my fitness business wasn't really growing at the rate that I thought it needed to be. Um, so through just, you know, just kind of just sheer financial kind of stress and burden. I really just kind of almost threw in the towel completely um, on both and just said, I'm going right. to start over. I didn't even know what I was going to do, but I almost said, I'm done with this. Like I'm ready to go. I'm starting 2019 with a the fresh new plan. I didn't know what I was going to do, um, but I'm not a quitter. And, mm-hmm. and I knew because of the people that are surrounded me, my my Christian brothers, my friends, my mentors, my coaches, guys like Rudy, um, guys like Vince, Mike Westerdahl, uh, Dan Long, Josh Cashadorian. Just if you guys are out there listening, just I want you to know that your influence in my life over these past few months has been truly remarkable. So I want to thank you. But I'm not going to go too deep into that. But yeah, so I was at that point. Um, breaking point. Breaking point. Completely broken. Let's say I was broken. And if you guys... Um, want to see what that looks like. There's a picture, um, on my Instagram that I posted in Transformation. Early January. Oh my, dude, yeah. this, so, is, but, this is awesome. But when you see this picture, I think what's important to do is to go back just six months and look at me in July of 2018 and look at where I was at and look at first the transformation from where I was in July mm-hmm. to that person that was in December, because that was during that moment where I was struggling, I was stressed, I had a lot of negative habits and influences, and I just wasn't living my truest and greatest self. And here is where it get got really tough, is while I'm doing this on my personal side, my business is still being reined in the health and fitness. So I'm coaching, teaching, educating but I'm, I'm, I'm having this internal struggle with myself because when I look at myself in the mirror, when I watch feel like a, fraud. a video, I feel oh, like I've a been fraud. I've been there. How can I be a person out? And if you watch my videos and you, even if you read the content that I wrote 
during the months of September, October, November, and December, there's a clear change in the delivery of how I speak and the words that I use. You can, you can see the difference. I can because it's obviously me and I'm speaking from a bias, but I truly think if you sat down and, and analyzed some of my videos long enough, you would see facial expressions, tonality is different, yep. the delivery, it's not motivated. just everything. Yep. And, and it's because I was forcing stuff. I was putting out information because I felt I needed to do it to run my business. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't coming from a point in a place of helping and educating. It was coming from a point of sheer need because uh, I felt I needed to pay the bills. And that's never a good place to be at as an entrepreneur when you're, sure. uh, when you're, when you're working out of just sheer um, fear, not, not a good place to be at all. So January rolled around. Um, I decided I wasn't quitting. I wasn't giving up that this business was going to succeed and Frank Rich Fitness was going to fulfill his passion. Um, but I knew I needed to do something massive, massively extreme, shift the paradigm of my life. So I did all the research I possibly could and I found the most um, extreme elimination type diet that, that I could do. And, and that was due as well to your injury though, right? Had you made that decision before your hand? No. So, oh. so that transformation took place prior to my hand cool. being hurt. Yeah, yeah. Right. So you decided to do carnivore before then? I decided to awesome. do carnivore before I injured my hand. So, so for those of you guys who don't know what carnivore is. Carnivore is a, it's a meat based diet. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Um, anything. So there's a few different, there's a few different tiers in, um, I want to first come at this with a disclaimer that I am by no means the leading expert in the carnivore diet. I'm going to share more of my personal story. I have worked with clients. I understand enough of it. But from the, the science standpoint, I want to refer you to guys like Dr. Sean Baker and some of the other carnivore diets, uh, carnivore doctors that are out there. And even look up guys like Keto Counterculture, Danny Vega and his wife, Mara, um, guys that are much more versed in the science aspect of it. But the carnivore diet is a meat-based diet. So any you can consume anything that the original source was in animal. Um, so that includes obviously the animal from head to toe. So um, all the all the muscle, all the meats, and then all the all the organs. And you want to get some bone broth, some collagen. You want to make sure that you get all those micro nutrients that you're getting from the animal. Um, you can have your fish, dairy pork um so like milk and cheese cream you're still yeah, good yeah right? it's, it's it's okay um obviously you don't want half of your calories coming from dairy and if you're <laughs> right. if, if you have a de uh, dairy intolerance. if you have dairy intolerance stay away from it completely what you're ultimately trying to do is it's 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 an elimination diet so you're eliminating any processed stuff um long-term solution do i think people need to be on a carnivore diet forever absolutely not i can share you my transformation, my results, and what some of my clients that I'm putting on it into so, short-term transitions so if the client are experiencing. comes to you problem. now, are you going to push them carnivore? Are you going to suggest, or are you not going to say anything and they're probably going to come to you because of you doing carnivore? Or what's your, you know, what, what would happen? A client messaged you now, and what would you say? Well, I'm never going to put every client on the same of diet approach. So when somebody contacts me, they contact me regarding the carnivore diet of course um then that will be the first place that we go and that's probably because they're going to say hey i saw you were doing the carnivore diet For sure what are your thoughts about it but plus that's really niche as well which is pretty cool as a business standpoint yeah right yeah it, it it really is um but that's not my only market that's not my only um thing that teaches. it's definitely not my my strength when it comes sure. to transformation but um, you know, if an initial, if a, if a, if a client reaches out to me in the initial consultation, we're just, I'm just going to gather information as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Where are they currently doing and where are they trying to go? Now in that process, if I believe that the introduction of a short term carnivore diet may, uh, accelerate or optimize their progress, mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to make a suggestion or introduce sure. it. Um, but at the end of the day, any client's diet is going to be initially dictated by them. For sure. Um, and then it's my job to fit what I can do within their within their. You know what? It's one phrase that I use a lot with, you know, when I'm talking to a client who's asking me about my programs or a potential client when, I'm, when they're asking me. I say, if I'm educated enough and I'm a good enough coach, 
I'm not going to make you join my program. Mm. I'm going to join yours. Yeah. And that's exactly what you're talking about. So I assume most, of, not most, but a lot of people will probably come to you because that's your niche too, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what I'm getting a lot of, a lot of right, right now. And it's opened up my market and my demographic because for the longest time I really put myself into a men's muscle building world. Mm -hmm. um, but now I'm, I'm able to, to help women i'm able to help um people that aren't just already in great shape and want to get in even greater shape i'm able to help people that are struggling with real weight loss and, and physical you know challenges um you know just two personal close close examples to me is my father and my sister just to give you guys a, a family background is i do not come from a lean and healthy fit family um everybody in my family is overweight um I was as a child, which is why I got into bodybuilding and training then, right. at the age of 15. Um, you know, I bought the encyclopedia. I was in the gyms following the bodybuilders around. So when my family started to see my results, first of all, they never took any of my advice for the last 15 years. And I don't know if that's because I was trying to put them on a bodybuilder diet because that was the world that I was living in for mm -hmm. such a long time. But they never wanted to eat, you know, chicken, rice and broccoli. Um, but when they saw my immediate results and then when they really saw the change in me, um, when they saw the growth in my business, when they saw the opportunities that were coming my way, and I'm not saying that, you know, I, I got a position working for ROI machines because I ate a carnivore diet. Like that's, that would be the most ridiculous of course. Um, accusation. But when I was able to go through this transformation and, and, and what it did and, and, and re-centering my life and, and I truly think the biggest reason it worked is because I stuck to a strict structured discipline plan for 30 days extreme massively extreme I ate only meat um I did low intensity did cardio during that period of time no during oh, really? during my initial 30 days I ate nothing but red meat wow. um now that I've um, give us some examples like steak uh, so during that 30 days, I ate uh, two to three pounds of ground beef every single day and supplemented with some bone broth, collagen to make sure because I wasn't eating the other parts of the animal. So I want to make sure that I got those nutrients in. Two but to three pounds? Two to three pounds of meat every single day. And that was That's it? it? That was it. It was uh, 1,900 because it was an 85, 15% mm -hmm. Grass-fed beef, uh, so it was 1,900 to 2,700 ish calories, depending upon the day, um, and I would cycle those depending upon what I did activity-wise. Right. So I did train every day for those 30 days. Um, so let's just say you're a listener listening to this, and you're like, "Hmm, this is interesting." What would you? Let's just say if you were to segregate people who you think could benefit from it. Firstly, give us some examples of of of, of people who you think could benefit. Benefit from a carnivore diet. Yeah. Um, anybody that um, is dealing with gut issues mm -hmm. um, has um, problems being regular bowel movements, um, just completely gut in inflamed. Anybody that has um, joint inflammation, where I was originally introduced to it was because of my girlfriend has rheumatoid arthritis. Yeah, you were saying. Um, so she's. Is, for the is, past she, two years, is she doing this too? She, she did through it um, and through kind of our own anecdotal research, we think we've discovered that it doesn't work for her. So here's what I'm, here's what I guess is really the answer to your question is, um, who is it perfect for? We don't know until you try it. Um, I mean, I, and, and, that, and that's not the answer that I think people want to hear. Um, well, the thing I say to my clients is this, it's like, I don't care if you do keto, I don't care if you do paleo, I don't care if you do carnivore, I don't care if you do high carb, low carb, whatever the hell you do. If you can stick to it consistently yes. for a long period of time, yes. great. Yep. The reason I actually like it, so, so here's the thing, I've never done keto, I've never done carnivore, mm -hmm. I've never done um, paleo, yep. I've never done vegan, mm -hmm. I've never done vegetarian, what else we got? There's, there's plenty. Yeah, see, right? I'm, I'm so I've never done any of these and I want to try them so that I can authentically say 
this may work for you. I did it myself. This is what I found. Mm -hmm. And I like the idea of, to be honest with you, dude, I don't know anyone else. I'm sure I do, but I haven't had a conversation about with about carnivore with anyone else other than you. Okay. So this is pretty cool for me. Okay. Because I'm like, okay, let's go. So see, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm the, because I did a 30 day, like deep dive into it where it's all I was reading, listening to. What I want to know is this. What was your brain function like? What was your sleep like? And what was your digestion like? So we already talked about digestion, but let's go through three of those pillars. Because to me, these are the three most important things for me in mm-hmm. my life. Okay. I want my sleep to be good. Yep. I want my concentration to be good. Yep. And I want my digestion to be good. Yep. Of course, I would love to be 220 pounds with like shredded abs. But these fundamentally, I feel if I can sleep well, I've got good digestion and my brain function is optimal. Mm-hmm. I'll be a happy human being. So how did you find those three? Those are the, those are uh, what I'm realizing now are the three most important things for me. Mm-hmm. And it's this transition point in my life where for up until last year, the other stuff was the most important. Right. Being 240. Yeah. yeah. Shredded. And okay. Well, I don't think I'll ever be 240 <laughs> and shredded. But. Um, but okay. So, so sleep. So I was never a good sleeper. And if you want to ask Rudy, he will attest to that. <laughs> um, so I, I was never able to fall asleep easily. Right. Um, I was a guy that had to. Do you think it was your quality of sleep or your time that you were asleep or a mixture of both? It was the inability to fall asleep cool. because um, during the day I was having to rely so heavily on caffeine mm-hmm. because my energy was so inconsistent right. throughout the day. So as I ate you know, my carb meals or whatever, as I ate my four to five meals, my blood sugar was just all over the map. So I was constantly in an elevated state and then an hour later I'm crashing. So to get out of that crash and maintain the level of production that I need, I would drink a coffee, drink a monster, you know, take a caffeine pill, whatever it was. And then I would go to the gym or I would need some pre-workout and then I get home from the gym. Then I got a little bit more work to do. So I'd have a tea. So and you have t- post-workout carbs and oh done. yeah, well you do 150 carbs post-workout. Yes. You're you're asleep within seven minutes, um, and I've actually timed it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so by the time it was ready to go to sleep, I've consumed now a pot and a half to two pots of coffee throughout the course of the day. So it's you know 10 o'clock at night, and my brain is just racing. Right. I got to turn the TV on just to have a little bit of sound to distract my attention just so I can go to sleep. Well, TV's running sound. We know I'm never getting into any type of deep or REM sleep, waking up three or four times throughout the middle of the night. Um, so I never, never in my life was a good sleeper. I now um, am in bed by 930 every single night, except when I'm working for Rudy at 11. <laughs> um, so I'm in bed by 930 and I'm up by 430 without an alarm clock and I sleep straight through. Wow. And digestion um, is you're saying is optimal, right? So yeah. So so what I do want to what I do want to note though is that if you decide that you're going to do this, there will be a transitioning of course point They're for you. Things. Yeah. What you you have to realize is you're you're essentially changing your entire gut microbiome. All the bacteria within your gut um, over these 30, 60, 90 days is going to be completely different. So the initial phase, um, you're going to experience a little bit of um, I guess loose, loosest, loose stool right. um, to keep it classy here. Um, but yeah, so, you, so the first few days, and I've had people that were you know concerned because I didn't, I guess, really explain it at the beginning. Um, but that will all bypass um, within a week or two. But at, after that, digestion is 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 on point. Um, you um, you do pass much much less because you're consuming much less food, okay. and your body is is using. Um, the majority of what you, of, of what you eat. I mean, mm-hmm. um, if that, I'm sure we can all envision what I'm talking about. And for me, brain function. So uh, transparently, the one thing that mm-hmm. I have tried is that worked really, really well is intermittent fasting. Okay. Now I don't throw that. I don't, to be honest, I don't even say that I've done that because not that I want to hide it. I just don't want people to feel like they need to if they join my program. Mm -hmm. The reason I did is because when I used to intermittent fast and have my first meal at like 1 p.m., I was functioning optimally for those fasted hours, brain Mm function-wise. And what I realized is even then, I would have a protein car, I would have a protein fat 
first meal, mm -hmm. a protein fat second meal, and I would backload all of my all carbs, carbs on my workout. Carb period. backloading. And what I was finding was that my mm -hmm. brain function on protein and fats or fasted was so much better. Well, that's that's why the keto diet is is now become the the trend in, in the biggest thing in, in weight loss and dieting mm -hmm. these days because of the cognitive benefits <clears throat> of it. So brain function on a carnivore, all you have to do is realize that when you go carnivore, you're going keto. We, uh, for sure. I think Rudy and I, sure. and, yeah. unless you, unless you truly screw up your, your macro calculations and don't eat the fatty meats that you should be eating because this is a meat diet, but it's not go eat chicken and right. eat meat. You so, want your fatty meat. So just to make one thing clear, unfortunately, people have this misconception that no carb is keto. That's not the case. To be in ketosis, technically, I've spoken about this on an episode before, means that your fat content needs to be high. Mm -hmm. And your protein is generally not as high as you think because protein can actually knock you out of ketosis. Mm -hmm. So generally speaking, when you are doing a carnivore diet, it is highly likely that you're in ketosis or that you're keto. So these benefits will apply. Yeah. Well, your um, your your protein can be higher on a carnivore because uh, well, it kind of needs to be because you're not getting yeah. the trace carbs and you're not getting the carbs that you're getting on a um, on a keto diet. Mm -hmm. And then I also think if you're training at a high level um and your strength training and you're doing some high intensity work then once again you can get away with um a higher protein an intake and here's an interesting um result that we're getting with some of my clients um that we're dropping their total calories mm -hmm. but because they're increasing their protein intake even in a caloric deficit they are seeing a gain in body lean mass this right. happened with me personally mm -hmm. and this is happening with a handful of people For that sure. are following this protocol as we speak sure right i was now. speaking actually last night at, at ben and ben and invited us over for for dinner like i was telling you earlier and um danny vega was there so oh, so you uh, spoke to danny right you just, yeah. do you talk about carnivore we spoke about uh oh, okay we, we spoke about keto okay and that he's basically doing carnivore in a way yeah. Um, and it was funny because he was talking about... Danny was the first guy that I knew that did carnivore. Right. Yeah. So so he was talking about it last night. And one of the things he was saying was that um, he, he his body is so receptive now to staying in ketosis that he can actually have a decent amount of carbs and still stay in ketosis mm. over a shorter period of time. Um, and he's even able to push his protein up above 300 I'd still stay in ketosis. So yes. um, that was an interesting conversation for me. Well, and obviously he was talking about, you know, in, in, in terms of, from a, from a biochemical point of view, obviously the glycolytic, the glycolytic pathway involved um, in terms of oxidation of, of macronutrients and that depending on the, the day that he can actually get away with having some carbs and still stay in keto. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously for, for the vast majority of people who think, you know, could you're in keto if you have low carb. That's just not the case. Obviously, yeah. there's a lot of other factors you need to take into consideration. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. And what I'm what I'm really looking forward to is because yes, I have had this injury now. It's just four weeks. Um, I had a hard cast on for three weeks, and then I'm I'm in a soft wrist um, cast for one week with two more weeks to go. So this will be six weeks without really pushing um, any level of intensity when it comes to you training. You said you're doing some lower body. I am doing some leg training. I am right. doing some leg training. So actually, this is something I want to talk about just, you know, while it's arisen. Yeah. I'm sure there'll be people out there who at some point are going to be in a similar situation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you've broken, broken which? I dislocated um, three metacarpals in wow. my hand. Cool. So I've broken two of mine. Okay. Um, so I know what, kind of what it's like. <laughs> yeah. But there's going to be loads of people out there with injuries. Let's just say a hand injury. Because mm -hmm. to be honest, that's a really tough one to have. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you can't hold anything. Yep. You can't hold a bar. You can't do much leg workout. You can't do much leg work. Yeah. You can do some. You can't do any upper body work. Yeah. So to someone out there listening who at some point is going to go through something similar, mm -hmm. what would you advise in terms of how they would train what they would do to their nutrition um, and how they would implement their cardio or what they should focus on. Yeah. Um, training wise, the first thing I would do is I would be prepared to not, depending upon your injury. Um, this was kind of my mindset is I was okay if I did not have what I would consider a good workout mm -hmm. for six weeks. I was okay with that. 
I'm you need to be. Yeah. This is not something I've done right. in a long time. I think I shared with you. I've for 15 years have um, if some if I needed to produce more results, I just poured more gasoline on the problem Forward. in every area of yep. everything. Um, so I was prepared to take six weeks completely off. So I think if depending upon your injury, first of all, be prepared to not be able to train. But what that's going to allow you to do is focus on and perfect the other areas of your of your fitness mm -hmm. or whatever it is you're doing. So dial in your nutrition. If you can't train for a limited amount of time or for any length of time, that's the time that you should focus 100% on right. mastering, dialing, and becoming knowing what your nutrition so needs I, to be. So I get some people messaging like, dude, I'm so interested in your program, but I'm injured at the minute. How about we arrange a start date for the 1st of June? And I'm like, dude, if you're injured right now, this is when you need my help. Yes. Right? Or people who are traveling. Well, I'm traveling for a while and I want, you know, afterwards I'll have 12 perfect weeks. No, you won't. Yeah. You will never have 12 perfect weeks. Yeah. If you can nail it now and help um, get help with the fundamentals while things are, you know, here, there, and mm -hmm. everywhere. It's easy afterwards. I, you brought up Danny. I may hire Danny the minute I can return to wow, training. Awesome. Because he's a lovely guy too. Right? I love Danny. I love his wife. Um, yeah. I love the kid. Like they're just they're they're awesome. Like Maura and, and my girlfriend Seth, and they're super close. Um, but with where I'm at right now, with running my business and then being a part of this agency, mm -hmm. I don't really have the time to worry about what you're doing, what my training is, what my nutrition needs to be. So, um, as we've been speaking all podcasts about hiring people that are above you or, or at where you need to be, Danny, in my mind is definitely levels ahead of me from a carny carnivore training and performance standpoint. So let me hire that coach to take care of that part for me so I can focus on the things that I need to do. So yeah, if, if, if you're out there and you're at that point in your life where you're in your season of work or season of grind, or you're just overly busy, now is the most important time for you to seek out that coach or that mentor in the area where you need to help most. For sure. For sure. Um, and digestion wise, you said you're, you're so much better now. So, so much better. Um, you know, I've had, I've had, um, a few days off, I guess so to speak. In the 30 days I didn't, I was 100% so, dialed in. So just that. playing devil's advocate for a while. Yeah. One thing that I've realized when in any form of diet, no matter what you do, um, if you eliminate X, Y, and Z from your diet, you have a higher probability of your body rejecting when you imp implement it back in. Mm -hmm. Have you found that? And if that's the case, what have you done to negate that? So, so um, for example, if you were to have like a ton of carbs now or a huge amount of dairy, your body would probably reject it, right? Um, me, personally, I'm going to do okay, I think, um, because I've, I've gone through, I've been a competitive body. So I've gone through this whole, I'm going to die for 20 days and then I'm going to eat, right. you know, 15,000 calories in two hours. Um, so I'll be honest, my body just does not like dairy. Yeah. So from a younger age, I would have eliminated a lot of dairy from my consistent diet mm -hmm. because it didn't agree with me. I just felt like my digestion, yeah. my digestion was subpar. Yeah. My skin wasn't great. So, so um, piggybacking off of that, here's where the carnivore diet can work for anybody. Mm -hmm. If you want to identify what foods your body does not respond well to and you're willing to invest the time to go through a process of learning that, mm -hmm. this approach is gonna be the one you're gonna to wanna to do. Eliminate everything, go carnivore only for a short period of time, minimum 30 days, probably closer to a 60 to 90 day period. So now you've, you've given your body the length of time to get everything out of it that's been building up inside of there mm -hmm. for however long you've been eating whatever diet it is that you're eating. And if you're listening here in the States, chances are you've been eating the poor Western diet right. for the majority of your life. Um, so go through the process of the elimination now through your reintroduction phase. This is where you're going to either succeed and you're going to come out on the end of it, knowing exactly what foods you can, should, and will be eating, or you're going to mess it up because you're going to go from eating only meat to eating everything all at once. So the process needs to be 
foods at a time, one, two, three, four food groups at a time. So your reintroduction phase, if you go for carnivore, the next phase you want to reintroduce is just your other types of healthier fats. So carnivore, now you want to transition into maybe more of a whole foods based uh, keto type diet. Now you can transition into maybe adding some fruits or some other types of carbs. So now you're looking at more of a paleolithic approach. So you're kind of going through this progression where you're adding macros to where eventually you've gone through enough reintroduce, reintroduction of foods. You found some foods that don't work well for your digestion. So you keep those out and then you find the foods that work really, really well for you and you can maintain throughout the day. Then what you're going to identify is some foods that are like your superhuman foods that you perform best in the gym that are your foods that you eat when you perform best for focus sessions of work or maybe the foods that are going to help you sleep at night. So your goal is at the end of this process is to ultimately find your diet, your specific diet. What foods do I need to be eating and when and how should I be structuring my meal plan? Yeah, for sure. That, that is my vision with um, where I'm taking my clients through, through my coaching program, wherever you come in at, if we, if we, if you come into this body rebuilding program that I'm, that I'm developing, where I help, where I help guys take control back of their lives. And in six months being the best shape they've ever been in, um, our goal at the end of that six months is for you to know exactly what your nutrition needs to be. But your superhuman you, you, nutrition. you take people on for a minimum of six months? Have you a minimum period generally? I have not. Um, I have not integrated that yet. Um, so Frank put a, a, a pretty pretty cool post based on our conversation the other night at, at Food in in uh, Vince Almonte's Mastermind, um, along the lines of adding in like a group call. Like for some of you guys who are listening who are a client of the business, you will be well aware of our group Skype program or an, our academy program, depending on the level of entry. Um, yeah, talk about that. So, so that's yeah. something you're going to implement. And dude, it's so valuable, you well, know. I, I touched on it it's earlier so when I was yeah when I was talking about you know my own coaching program. I was I was so focused on building out this um, process and system through yeah. a coaching app. I wanted videos with me teaching with me actually coaching guys and then just all of these perfectly but no one to one contact. Yeah. Right? So minimal. Contact, yeah. Right? But after our conversation with you and you're telling me about these calls and the connection that you have with people, I had this aha moment. I know you guys listening, this is your first introduction to me. Um, but I feel one of my greatest strengths is my ability to teach and educate and deliver a message For sure. verbally through a podcast or through a video. Um, so after dinner, literally I had about a 35 minute drive home that night um, Stephanie and I are having this conversation, yeah. my girlfriend, and it's just that moment that not only um, were my clients not getting the results, but it's because I was under delivering. I was not showing but, up as the coach. But, but that you know I the thing is, dude, do. like it's not that. So there's so many coaches out there under delivering because they can't be bloody asked. You're under delivering in what you were doing because you just you. To me, it, you're frustrated because you want to give all this, you want to give them this attention. Yeah. But if you follow a low ticket program, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. So, I'm, dude, I'm so glad because you resonate with me on a lot of levels that I was getting so frustrated that I wasn't having enough contact. Yeah. That I've done a few things. I've taken on a coach yeah. so can, they can give the value to the, those clients that they need mm -hmm. and then i've leveled up my value and what i offer my one-to-one -one clients by putting them in a group yeah well it um, gives people options and it i know you have a lot of coaches that listen to this podcast correct yeah for sure so if you guys are out there and and, and, and you're thinking like am i charging enough do i need to drop my prices do i need to lower my prices should i up my prices um just sharing my personal experience i took a client that had been paying me a hundred dollars a month, and what contact were they having? Just for reference, they were having they got um, app based workouts. They got messaging with me through the app, and they got email contact once a week. Cool, very minimal, right. very minimal. Um, but still, what I thought was a great service, um, but it just it, it wasn't anywhere near what I was able to give her. Um, so after t speaking with you put something brand new together. Um, we're now transitioning to, if you're gonna work with Frank Rich through our coaching program, you're gonna work through video coaching, Skype, Zoom, and I also have a messaging app awesome. um, that is video-based messaging. So, so what is it now that, that you're pricing that at? 
That's five hundred dollars. Five hundred bucks a month. Cool. Yeah. yeah. To work and personally with me, if you still want to work through the app based training, um, that is available. There's um, coaches that communicate and deliver that service, and then the coaches and I have weekly, um, like kind of clients um, for sure meetings to where I'm still brought like up to speed on what's going on, and I have a little bit of insight and a little bit of feedback. But the real one-to-one -one connection, I think, is my greatest value to Dude, people. Dude, and the Skype gives you that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So for me, like I was saying, when I was doing my doctorate, I only had an like one day a week that I could really give everything to this part of the mm -hmm. business. And you know, getting on Skype with clients was perfect. Yeah, like I was able to charge more, but add more value. They would see more. Um, they would get better results. I would build a closer relationship with them. Mm -hmm. Honestly, dude, from the people that have stayed on my Skype program, like I've at this point, they're global, right? They're all over the world. Yeah. Not many people, uh, not, not that not many are in, in the UK. Well, that's a small I, portion yeah. are. And I've met like 80% of them. That's like, awesome. I'm that's, meeting a guy tomorrow. Well, yeah, I saw some of your I pictures met, while you were here right, in Tampa. And like, yeah. that's just awesome. I got um, I got a client in Utah. She's opened up her house. She's like, if you're ever in, but, you're but, ever in Park City, but you know there's what, a dude, room like, for you. If, you're, if, if your coach is emailing you, first of all, you don't know it's your coach. Secondly, all you see is like frankrich69 at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. Like you don't have a personal connection other than this is your email address and this is the information you've got thus far. And this potentially is your progress photo. Yep. So, but you have no connection with me. I don't go, hey bro, what's up? I don't, you don't send, I don't send you photos of me. You don't know who it is. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult to build that level of trust, that level of intimacy in a way, yeah. because, you know, if you're a coach and someone is going through shit or someone is, you know, going through a really tough time mentally or physically or whatever, and maybe, you know, they're having relationship issues, they're having troubles at home, trouble at home, they don't have a good support network, you're not going to open that up on email. So, like, if you have that close relationship with someone over Skype, you become a best friend. Yes. Like, so it, that added so much value to me, and you know? it, it meant I was able to scale my business. So, dude, I'm so I'm so happy that you're going to do that because you will, from the sounds of it, you want better contact with your clients. Um, and realistically, five hundred dollars a month for that contact is nothing. It's nothing, you know. Not 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 for the people that um, are following me. You know, sure. that, that I'm trying to reach. Um, well, the thing is this, you know, like if you're, let's just say for 12 weeks, you're charging, you know, $1,500 or $1,500 a month, uh, $1,500 for the 12 weeks. Like if someone goes, oh, well, I can get a meal plan online and I can get a training program online. It's like, that's not what you're paying for. Mm -hmm. You're paying for going from A to B and getting an amazing transformation under the guidance of, um, a highly knowledgeable individual in in this area in this field. Yeah, you have that accountability. You have that level of contact. You have that level of trust. You know, if you put that into into perspective, that's that's it's it's madness well, not to. Well, how much did your education cost you, dude? <laughs> well, well, to be to, to be to be really honest, in the UK and Ireland, it's a little bit cheaper than it is over okay. here. But still, like yeah. if if you factor in, I've been t ten years in university. Mm -hmm. I had a four year undergrad. I had a master's. I had uh, three years of air ex experimental work. I had a year of writing up. Um, da -da -da -da, that's nine. And then by the time I did my viva, handed in, made corrections, got my paper ready, that was another year. Mm -hmm. So that's ten years in in the highest level of education in the world. Like that's a lot of time, dude. Yeah, that's a lot of time. Mm -hmm. After thousands of clients, literally tens of thousands of, of clients later, um, you know, nearly two handfuls of book covers, um, coming out here on a regular basis, investing a huge amount of money into Ben, into Vince, oh. spending time with Rudy, yourself, all these people that are in our network, like that information is that's priceless. It's priceless. Dude. Priceless. It's priceless. Right. Priceless. So when someone says, like, if someone turns around to you and says five hundred dollars a month, that's expensive. I'm like. Yeah, well, I pay Ben three times that. Like, mm -hmm. I pay him twice my mortgage payment. Like, because the value that I get from him is worth every single penny. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that. You know, it's so. I paid. I paid business consultants five hundred bucks an hour to sit down. For sure. Yeah. Like, for sure. And for sure. sure. You have for to. sure. And and one thing that Vince said on our podcast, actually, if you listen to it, he said, "Don't think what it'll cost. Think what it'll cause." Mm -hmm. And the thing is, if you can impact someone permanently. 
Like my goal is not to keep a client on a, you know, on a retention basis every single month. Oh, no, absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I, I share this with anybody that is on a, on a discovery call with me or an assessment. It's like, okay, well, well what's like, my goal is to get you off my books as fast as possible. 100%. So that's what I'm going to charge you what I'm going to charge you because I'm going to give you everything that you need. I'm going to weeks. educate you. Right. It may be 12 weeks. If we're really good, it may be shorter. It may be longer. It may we be don't, six months. Who knows? We don't know. Right. Um, and, but and, and but and I can tell you that my goal is to get you off my books as fast as possible. For sure. Because and if that's they a thought that I can sign somebody and else. And if they to. decide to stay on because they love the accountability and you build a good relationship, I mean. One, even better. Yeah. Because what that person, that person now, as if, if talking to coaches now, becomes your walking billboard. For sure. For yeah. sure. And at the end of the day, you want the best. Like sometimes, not, dude, a lot of the time, I want that transformation more than they do. Mm -hmm. And that's when you need to have a conversation with them and say, listen, do you really want this? Because I really want this transformation. So when someone messages me and I'm like, I can help you. I'm telling you I can help you. I'm not just saying that because I want to take their money. I'm saying that because I know I can help them. I know they can be an amazing transformation. And if someone comes through and I know I can't, that's on my head too. Yeah. Right. You know, so I, you need to be honest. You need to be transparent. Um, and yeah, dude, it, it's awesome. I'm excited to see how things go. Yeah. Well, you know, just, just real quick. Um, you mentioned, you know, your, your coach, Ben, it was, it was partially you sharing. This is Ben Pekulski, by the yeah, way. Yeah. It was partially you sharing with me, um, what you were paying him. Mm -hmm. That was the, that was one of the motivations for me to up your price, to up my price. 100% dude. Um, I'm like, if he can charge that, like we can charge a third of that. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, admittedly, I still, I still charge less than I should for sure. 100%. So that's something I need to reflect on. Um, and it's something that over time I'll become more comfortable charging more. Um, but you know, that's a progression and that's for another day. Yeah. That's for another day. Mm -hmm. Um, for the last few minutes, dude, I want to ask you a few specific questions. Okay. You can throw them at you. Um, is it a rapid fire? <laughs> no. I wasn't prepared for this. <laughs> no, no. You know what I should do is I should get some really awkward questions to like throw You don't, you don't have like lines. a, like a, like a three or like, you don't have like your thing or. Mm, I, you know, for a few people, I was like throwing random questions okay. at people. I did this one episode with this really good friend of mine and I had like, I'd lined up, like I knew him quite well. He was an Irish guy. And I lined up the most awkward questions oh, that I can ask him, but I would ones that I knew he could handle. Yeah. Like really touchy subjects. Okay. Like, what are your thoughts on this federation? What are your thoughts on steroids? What are your thoughts on sleeping with a client? All of these oh, things. Okay. But they were really, really good answers. Yeah. And it opened up a lot of questions in terms of a lot of thought provoking conversations. Yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna do that. But um a few things. Firstly, Loads of people are asking me about what is going on with my 30 day cover model shred. So I want to introduce you on this one. So you've come on board. We kind of briefly spoke about it with Rudy as, uh, as part of ROI machines. Mm -hmm. So you are um, one of the uh, project managers, right? Yes. So the 30 day cover model shred that I'm releasing is with in collaboration with Rudy. Um, and obviously Frank's going to be a big part of that going forward. Mm -hmm. So hopefully in the next few weeks, you know what the reason I launched on January 1st and it did really, really well. I pulled it back because there were a few things that I really wanted to integrate. One was I wanted a Facebook group whereby, because of course these are, e these are ebook based programs. I wanted there to be, like we said, that personal connection, that personal touch, that little bit more, um, involvement on my part mm -hmm. so what we've decided to do is integrate a facebook back end in case someone wants or needs that support okay so it'll be soon it'll be soon guys i promise but th this is an introduction obviously to, to to frank so when you guys if you guys do get involved with a third day cover model shred um it'll be myself and frank liaising on that of course yeah touching base on business and this um this will be pretty cool but i'm excited hopefully in the next few weeks yeah yeah i'm uh I'm freshly jumping into this and from what I've seen. You're embracing the role of Rudy too. It's pretty cool. Oh, I love it, man. Like, well, well, you know what? From you working in this role at Rudy is going to massively help your own business too. Right? It already has. For sure. It already has. Well, I mean, think about it. If I wasn't working with Rudy, I would not have. It wouldn't be here. I wouldn't either. be at dinner with you the other right. night. We yeah. wouldn't have talked about Skype coaching. I would not have. So those clients signing up at 500 pounds a month. I would not you have still be at 100 pounds a month. I would not have changed hundred dollars. Hundred dollars. Yeah. I would not have changed my coaching program. So I'm already immediately. Um, Dude, I'll accept been, the coffee anytime. You no know, that could be the kickback. Why? Why? Well, I told you. Um, we'll we'll work. So here's the deal. Because 
Sarah and Stephanie connected so well. Cool. When we get this to 20 clients and we're at 10K a month, um, we'll fly over the over the water and see you guys. Dude, that'd be awesome. Good. That'd be awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so where can people find out more about you? And if people want to contact you or hear more about your thoughts on carnivore, where can they go? Yeah, well, um, directly related to the carnivore, I did post a YouTube video um, right at the initial time that I started my uh, transformation, cool. doing my initial response reaction series. That's on YouTube. So you can check that out at Frank Rich Fitness um, is my YouTube channel. Just search that in the Google tab or search Frank Rich, the carnivore diet. The, the video will pop right up. So kind of go into detail there. Um, if you want to um, get on my email newsletter, mm -hmm. um, which I, you know, I deliver content daily to to the to the email subscribers. There's a few ways to go about doing that. Probably the best way is just to download one of my free workouts or one of my free guides. Um, you can go to massheticmuscle.com forward slash free week. So awesome. massthetic, I'm sure you can link that up. Um, you can find me on, on Instagram, um, not, not focused solely on putting out content related to, um, to the carnivore diet, but I do trickle it in through there, share a lot of my transformations on there as well. Um, and I, and I, you know, I teach a lot of fitness and muscle building. I, you know, like we shared in this entire podcast, I've been fortunate to work with some of the greatest and pretty cool people. With yeah. It. When it comes to exercise science. So, um, I want to take that information and, and help people, um, train intelligently, avoid injuries. Um, my hand was not injured during training, but I want your joints to be healthy because I do work mostly with guys that are 35 and up. Um, we're focused now on longevity. For sure. So longevity through hypertrophy training. So understanding, you know, the execution aspects of, of the moves that we're doing. So that's a lot of content you're going to find on my Instagram channel. Awesome. Um, that's Frank Rich underscore fitness. Um, you can go to frankrichfitness.com. Um, you can Google Frank Rich Fitness. You can find me find me all over the place. Awesome. I'll pop into Chris's Instagram stories every once in a while. Sometimes you'll see me. Especially when we're training. Yeah, right? Yeah, we're going to come back and train for sure. Oh, if definitely. you guys don't come to London, I'll definitely be back Tampa-wise. Oh, we're getting you back in Tampa. And sure. we, we are, we're, we're definitely going over, over the water at some Dude, point. Dude, it's so. been a pleasure. Thank you. No, thank you. Guys, as always, I'm going to leave you with the same quote at the end of every podcast. Make the most of today. You'll not get this day again. Peace.